The all-new 2022 Volkswagen Taos and Mazda CX-30 are the product of a familiar pattern in the car business. As a particular vehicle segment grows in popularity, in this case crossovers, manufacturers tend to enlarge and differentiate their entries to make room for new models that fit the newly created gap in their lineup. With VW's range of SUVs in the United States swelling to include the compact Tiguan, midsize Atlas and Atlas Cross Sport, a vacancy opened up in the increasingly popular subcompact space amongst the likes of the Jeep Compass, Kia Seltos and the Subaru Crosstrek. So, in today's video, we will compare both the new Taos and the CX-30, from their exterior and interior design, to technology and engines, to give you a clearer image on which one you should get. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. On the outside, the Taos exterior is a tidy balance of the current Tiguan mixed with the more rounded styling of the ID4 electric crossover. The fascia adopts squarish headlights and Volkswagen's latest grille, which high-end models highlight with an LED strip. The back is attractive but simple, drawing heavier inspiration again from the Tiguan. There is a new placement for the name, centered under the license plate, as well as sculpted taillights and more vertical lines. The tailpipe finishers are integrated into the bumper while the diffuser is barely visible underneath. At 175.8 inches long and riding on a 105.9 inches wheelbase, the Taos isn't a dramatic increase in size over the outgoing Golf. This neat balance between compact crossover and compact hatchback give it a best of both worlds feel. The CX-30 is Mazda's latest small crossover and it sports one of the most resolved and mature designs. Whereas others in the segment are caught up in jagged lines and trinkety add-ons, the Mazda stays the course with typical and mature style. Like the hatch variant, it lacks any real top design creases or folds. Instead, wide acre curves do the talking, which bend reflections quite unusually on its surface. Its sweeping body lines are complemented by a small greenhouse that lends to a tougher, more tank-like appearance and the hood sticks out farther above the headlights, echoing the long nose appearance of the 3-row CX-9. Coupling the bodyworks with Mazda's unique paint offering of salt red crystal or machine gray pumps things up again, either paint costs extra and is well worth the price. Overall, it's a smart-looking crossover that design-wise sits in a class of its own. Jumping inside, the VW's interior is separated into two levels. The top level features air vents, a trim piece and the newly standard VW digital cockpit. That means all your gouges are digital and customizable. The gauge screen is flanked on the right by VW's latest MIB infotainment system with redundant buttons for your often used functions. S models get MIB2 with a 6.5 inch screen. SE and SEL models have MIB3 that measures 8 inches. SEL top models also offer wireless charging, wireless app connect, multi phone pairing, and three USB C ports. The lower half of the dash has your climate controls and a nice stitched leather pad above the glove box. Lower models have the single zone control, while upper trims get the new Climatronic dual mode system with capacitive sliders like on the Tiguan. As for the Mazda, the CX-30's cabin is exceptional. The sound dampening is partly from the high quality materials found literally everywhere. The leather trim, the soft rubber, the cushioning pads, there is little cheap stuff in here. The touch and feel of the knobs are all the same regardless of size. The leather seats are soft yet supportive with no change in comfort between the front and rear seats. The styling is just as immaculate. From the tiered dashboard to the interior colors, just elegant. The layout is simple, it's strategic. There are buttons for features you want quick access to, like temperature and volume controls. The display is purposely positioned so far away from the driver's seat that there is no point in reaching for it. Although the button icons surrounding the central knob are on the smaller side, there is no learning curve in memorizing their locations, as there are only four of them to tap. Also, the placement of the infotainment screen, head-up display, and instrument panel are within a similar visual space that your eyes spend less time searching for functions and more time focused on the road ahead. When it comes to cabin space, the towel seats five people, and the driver enjoys excellent visibility in all directions. Both rows of seats are comfortable, front seat passengers are unlikely to complain about the amount of space on offer, Headroom is good, and the seat goes back far enough to accommodate taller drivers. 
As a matter of fact, you will find that the Taos is almost as roomy as its larger sibling, with 99.5 cubic feet of passenger space compared to the Tiguan's 101. The back seat has plenty of room for taller riders, with a 6-foot tall passenger is easily able to sit behind a 5-foot 9 driver. There is a useful cubby with two USBs and a 12-volt socket in front of the gear lever, another cubby under the armrest and two cup holders. The door bins are decent and can hold a few bits and pieces and a medium-sized bottle of water. The Mazda CX-30 seats up to five as well, with heated front seats, a power-adjustable driver's seat and a heated steering wheel as an option. The front seats are spacious enough for most, even those tall enough will fit in the front with room to spare. The seats go back a long way, while headroom is good and there is plenty of width to the interior. Out back, things aren't as good as the front. A six-footer sitting behind a similarly lofty driver will find their knees awfully close to the back of the driver's seat. Now we come to the driving section. Under the hood of every Taos is a turbocharged 1.5-liter engine that will eventually replace the turbocharged 1.4-liter currently sold in the Jetta. Paired up with an 8-speed automatic in front-wheel drive or a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission for all-wheel drive, you'd think the new powertrain would have better manners than the unit in the Jetta, but that's just not the case. Dynamically, the 1.5 is a potent thing, with 158 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. These are adequate numbers for a vehicle that weighs between 3200 and 3400 pounds. The Taos accelerates with verve, and the two-wheel drive model will even bake its front tires if you get too antsy with the gas pedal. Though one punch is strong, and even at higher engine speeds, the 1.5 liter does well. But there are a couple of issues. First, this engine is neither especially quiet nor all that easy on the ears. Wind it out past 5500 RPM horsepower peak, and the volume grows to an unacceptable level while there is a constant buzziness north of 4000 RPM while under load. VW has gone to some lengths to make the towels feel more premium than most crossovers, but it could have gone further in dampening the engine's clatter. Second, both the 8-speed auto and 7-speed DSG show an unwillingness to engage off the line. Too often, you'd ask the car to accelerate, get no reaction, apply more throttle, and then you surge ahead with more acceleration than intended. The Mazda CX-30, on the other hand, is a charming on-road partner, offering the quick reflexes we expect from the brand along with an engine that outpunches many of its competitors. That it's so good to drive is probably the least surprising thing about the smallest Mazda crossover though. The engine is the standout here, considering what the CX-3 had to work with. That car's measly 2-liter could only muster 148 horsepower and 146 pound-feet of torque, which isn't great in a 3,000 pound crossover. The CX-30 adds an extra half-liter of displacement, 38 horsepower, and 40 pound-feet of torque over its predecessor, though it carries an extra 400 pounds of weight in all-wheel drive version. But even that increase in heft can't hide the impact of the 186 pound-feet of torque. The CX-30 feels eager off the line and at low speeds, with the 2.5-liter engine pulling it along easily. Dig deeper into the throttle, and steam runs out quicker than we'd like. Although this engine is still significantly punchier than what you'd find in the competition, it doesn't sound half bad either, although Mazda could stand to lower the volume a couple of notches. Like all Mazdas, it is a blast to throw into a bend. Fast steering and a firm suspension promote sharp turning, helping this crossover change direction as a Mazda should. It's genuinely fun on entry, but you can carry speed into corners too, thanks to the tightly controlled body motions with superior feedback through the steering wheel than you will find anywhere else on the class. A turbocharged 2.5-liter engine is optional and provides 250 horsepower. Selecting this powertrain also adds all-wheel drive. If you are a fan of the Mazda 3 hatchback, which we are, you will find the turbo variant just as nimble, athletic, and fun to drive, but with more oomph than the standard engine. Prices for the CX-30 start at $21,900 for the base front-wheel drive trim. All-wheel drive is available as a $1,400 option on every trim level. Getting into a CX-30 premium with all-wheel drive requires at least $29,600, although the price won't increase much from there. Mazda priced the CX-30 competitively. It undercuts the $24,200 VW Taos, the $23,000 Nissan Rogue Sport, and the $24,700 Fiat 500X. If you are set on a fully loaded vehicle, it is very hard to recommend. At $31,300, there are a fair few vehicles that have a lower max price like the Seltos at $28,600, the HRV at $28,900, and the Kona at $29,300.
As for the Taos, the S model's $24,200 base price is the same as that of the outgoing Golf hatchback that it more or less replaces. Budget $28,500 for the SE trim and a somewhat substantial $32,700 for SEL plus another $1,450 to $2,045 if you want all-wheel drive. Dependent on configuration, those prices position the Taos awfully close to certain versions of the Grander Tiguan, which starts at $26,500. Yet, considering the Taos' generous packaging and stronger roster of equipment, potential Tiguan buyers won't have to sacrifice much if they step down to this new addition in the brand's model range. It is not the fun-to-drive substitute for the Golf that we would prefer, but it does make a solid anchor for VW's SUV lineup. Time for the verdict. Taking everything that we just discussed thus far into consideration, the Mazda 3 is the clear winner. Thanks to its exterior design that is far more appealing than the boxy shape of the Taos, an interior that is a class above anything in its segment, superior handling and driving dynamics, especially with the newly announced turbo variant, without forgetting the lower price across the board. So, which one do you think is better? Let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for the latest car reviews and news. Take care, and see you in the next one.